Ah, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located outside of Delmont, Pennsylvania. My name is Jim Ellermeyer, I'm a behavioral health therapist. Today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Ashley Wyrick, and I'm a physician assistant student from the University of Mount Union. And on my right... I'm Leah, and I'm a physician assistant student from Seton Hill University. So quite often what we deal with is people with incredibly low self-concept and self-esteem. So remember, self-concept is how you view yourself. Self-esteem is what you have inside you. So there's four basic things that I myself work on, and that's self-esteem, self-concept, identity formation, and the ability to make conscious choices. And most all, this begins by making and starting the relationship with yourself. So tell me, have you ever had an issue with maybe perhaps some little low self-esteem, self-concept in your yes, life? Yes, Could you share a little bit? So how does a person, what does a person feel like when they feel like you're comparing yourself to others or um, you're paranoid about what others think about you and you just think about those thoughts over and over again. It's just hard to accept yourself. Mm -hmm. So, and when somebody else validates you, does that, does that help? Uh, mm -hmm. Does that help you? Yes. Okay. So how about uh, you, Ashley? How do I feel? Have you ever had an issue with low self-esteem and low self-concept? Yes. Mm -hmm. So say a little bit more about that. Um, you often feel like other people are judging you or making comments about you when they may not even be addressing or noticing those features or that specific quality of you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that unfortunately what happens to in, in today's society is is that we're constantly bombarded with sight, sounds, and images about how a person should be. Isn't that the truth? Yes. So when you when you see these commercials, when you see the media, when you see the billboards, when you see individuals advertising products, uh, tell me tell me what some of your thoughts are on that. Especially uh, remember these uh, these media types are they're generally geared to twelve to fifteen year old girls. <coughs> I think that it's just giving a bad image of what someone should be when the only person that you should be is yourself. And I think that young teens, especially girls, have a hard time accepting themselves and knowing their own strengths rather than what they think their weaknesses are. Most certainly. So what we begin what we begin to do is set up unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. of what we what we're supposed to be. Okay. So how does one how does one counter that? Uh, you know, you can all you, your father can tell you you're the prettiest girl at the dance, but if you don't believe it in your heart, that, that certainly doesn't help, does it? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. so, so so how does a person how does a person begin to do those type of things? What how does how does a person start to be, begin to develop some self esteem and some self concept? First, you have to set the intention. So you have to have a clear intention that you're going to love yourself and you're going to make the active choice to love yourself and accept yourself and that no one else is trying to do it for you or, or force you to do that. What, you're, what I'm hearing you say, Leah, is that you make a choice. You make yes. an active choice and you avoid the have to, need to, musts. Exactly. Those type of things that lock you out of choices. Mm -hmm. What else can a person do? Just understanding that no one's perfect, that it, just because you don't do something the way that you think it is doesn't mean that you're wrong or just because someone else doesn't do a task that you would do it doesn't mean that they're wrong and just understanding that everyone makes mistakes. So giving yourself permission. Mm -hmm. Giving yourself permission to not be perfect all the time. Anything else, Leah? Um, also, it's important to step back from self-criticism and understand, recognize that you have the negative thoughts and that you don't have to be those thoughts and just accepting that you are self-criticizing yourself and then moving forward from there. So when you're talking about self-criticizing, you're talking about some voice, some type of inner critic talking to you mm -hmm. and judging you perhaps against some impossible standard. So sometimes what we have to ask ourselves, and I'm challenging everyone out there, when you begin to hear that inner critic, when you begin to hear that voice, I'd like you to ask yourself, whose voice is that? Whose voice is that? And quite often it is not, it is not your own. Anything else, Ashley? Yeah, you just need to be kind to yourself. So being able to point out the positive characteristics of yourself and being able to accept those and simply be polite to yourself as well as others. Indeed. Leah? 
Um, next, I would say that you need to learn to forgive yourself and realize that you're going to make mistakes, but that you can learn from them and that you're not defined by your mistakes and just keep moving forward. You're not defined by your mistakes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's super stuff. I hope everybody carries that with them. So one of the things that we do, why, why do we develop, and especially in a 12-step world where they develop an attitude of gratitude, uh, what does an attitude of gratitude replace? So what, what we're talking about is replacing negativity, is that mm -hmm. correct? So when we're, when we're judging ourselves against others, having this type of uh, unreal expect expectations, we're, we're, setting our, we're setting ourselves up for negativity mm -hmm. when we're charged with negativity. So it's very difficult to just eliminate negativity. So, does anybody tell you just to snap out of it, or to cheer up, or to mm -hmm. you know, do it right? So. Right, right, get a grip, get over it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you say, oh, get over it. Yep. Okay. So that, that, that does not work. The idea is, is to replace that negativity with positivity. So what we do is we begin to add positives into our life. And as we add more positives into the life, pretty soon those negative things will drift off the table. So if you have a poor therapist, a poor doctor, a poor nutritionist, a poor teacher, they, they spend a lot of time telling you the things that you should eliminate from your life or things that you should not do. Mm -hmm. So what a, what a good coach, a good nutritionist, a good therapist, and a good doctor will do would rather start off by telling you things you can do. Okay, such as when you go to a nutritionist and they say, no more Big Macs for you, no more ice cream in your refrigerator, no more french fries, all these things, and you walk out of there with your head down, correct? Mm -hmm. So rather than do that, tell them things you can do. Can, you can add a glass of water with every meal, can you not? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can greet the rising sun, you can, you can give smiles, smiles are free, are they not? Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful time now. <laughs> So the idea is that you can give those away for free. And when we replace, when we begin to replace that negativity with, with positivity, pretty soon that inner critic will get drowned out, right? And pretty perhaps we'll make friends with that inner critic mm -hmm. and it become our friend rather, rather than an enemy. So the last thing that I'd like to talk about is using the I am statement. So I asked you, you two, uh, to make a little bit of an inventory of yourself today. Could you share what, the, what some of the things that you said using the I am? So. Um, I am motivated, I am kind, I am compassionate, I am organized, um, I am driven. I love that voice. I, lo I love that voice. That's your voice. Ashley? <clears throat> I am kind, I am caring, I am driven, I am motivated, I am empowering, I am special. Are you asking me? No, I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And these are these are your voice and these are the things I'd like you both and everyone out there to take your own inventory of your gifts, talents, and abilities and say them out loud to yourself a few times a day, especially in the morning and maybe as part of your nighttime routine too. So the last thing is is practicing meta loving kindness to yourself. And these are positive statements that begin to replace those negative statements. And I'd like everyone to, to say this to themselves every day. I am clean and sober all the time. My thoughts are strong and clear. I am confident in the decisions I make. You repeat that to yourself every day until it becomes ingrained into the core of your being. We're talking about cognitive behavioral therapy. We're talking about rewiring neutrons. And when you can say those things to yourself every day and they're true and you believe it, I challenge everyone out there to tell me what you cannot do. What you cannot do. These are, these are challenge, challenge podcasts. And as always, at the end of every podcast, we offer a free prescription. Yep. For fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And anyone? Fishing without bait. Well, we unplug the TV and we suggest fishing and we ask that everyone fish without bait. Aim a lifetime without definitive expectations. Until then, do a kindness to yourself and do a kindness for another. Namaste.